Good morning, this is Radio Good News. The goal of this program is to draw all people to the love of Jesus Christ, and this is episode number 98. I want everyone to know and experience the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are key to a Holy Spirit-filled and successful Christian life. I will focus on God's love because God is love and God's love is wonderful. I'm John Thornton. I'll be reading from the Bible, the New Revised Standard Version, because that's God's word to us in our language. Let's begin today with Psalm number 40. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the desolate pit, out of the miry bog, and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are those who make the Lord their trust, who do not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after false gods. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. Were I to proclaim and tell of them, they would be more than can be counted. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Then I said, Here I am. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. See, I have not restrained my lips as you know, O Lord. I have not hidden your saving help within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. Do not, O Lord, withhold your mercy from me. Let your steadfast love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. For evils have encompassed against me without number. My iniquities have overtaken me until I cannot see. They are more than the hairs of my head and my heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let all those be put to shame and confusion who seek to snatch away my life. Let those be turned back and brought to dishonor who desire my hurt. Let those be appalled because of their shame who say to me, Aha! Aha! But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say continually, Great is the Lord! As for me, I am poor and needy, but the Lord take thought, takes thought for me. You are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay, O oh my God. Those are God's words from Psalm number 40. Our musical guest today is Chris Rice. Tears are falling, hearts are breaking. How we need to hear from God You've been promised We've been waiting Welcome Holy Child Welcome Holy Child Hope that you don't mind our manger How I wish we would have known But long away Yourself at home, please make yourself at home. Bring your peace into our violence, bid our hungry souls be filled. Word now break in heaven's silence. Welcome to. Sent to heal us, tender brow prepared for thorn. Tiny heart whose blood will save us, unto us is born. Unto 
That's been Chris Rice. We'll hear from Chris Rice again at the end of the program. Turn with me if you can as we look at the very familiar Christmas story from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her firstborn child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Those are God's words from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. All the children in Miss Summer's third grade class were anxious about the upcoming Christmas program. They were all concerned and worried about one specific child, Ralph. Miss Summers remembered what had happened each year for the past two Christmas programs, for Miss Summers had been teaching third grade to Ralph now for the past three years. Ralph was one of those children who seemed to have terrible time understanding and succeeding in school. He was rather slow in his thinking, probably due to the alcohol that his mother had drunk during her pregnancy. The first year Miss Summers had Ralph in her class, she tried putting him in the play as one of the wise men. He was giving a, given a shiny golden box to present to baby Jesus. But when the performance happened, he just sat in the middle of the stage and yelled out, No, it's my pretty box and no one can have it. The next year, Miss Summers tried to have Ralph be an angel and sing in the choir. But when the time came for him to sing in the program, he just ran around the stage with his arms out to the side yelling, I'm an angel, I can fly, see me fly. So this year, Miss Summers decided to try having Ralph be the innkeeper. All he would have to do was open the door, and when Joseph and Mary said, Is there a bed here for a pregnant woman? All Ralph would have to say is, No room here, and then slam the door. Miss Summers worked really hard with Ralph and practiced and practiced his one line, no room here. Miss Summers thought that Ralph would do well. When the time came for the big Christmas program, everything looked really good. The school stage was all well decorated, the cardboard inn and manger were painted and all set up, and the choir sang beautifully. Then the children playing Mary and Joseph entered the stage. They knocked on the inn's door and asked, is there a bed here for a pregnant woman? And Ralph opened the door. He was quiet and said nothing. So then Mary and Joseph asked again, Is there a bed here for a pregnant woman? And Ralph said, No room here. 
Oh, an audible sigh of relief was heard from the audience as Ralph delivered his one line correctly. But he did not shut the door. As Mary and Joseph turned and walked to the other side of the stage, Ralph looked at them. Then he stepped out into the center of the stage and said, Joseph and Mary, don't go. You can have my room. The whole group of children started to laugh and laugh, and no one could finish the program. But then Miss Summers stood up and put her arms around Ralph and hugged him. She then said, I really think Ralph has seen the essence of Christmas, for Ralph has offered to give Jesus his own room. Is there room in your heart for Jesus? At that first Christmas over 2,000 years ago, have you ever considered just how difficult was the journey to Bethlehem? Mary and Joseph were forced to travel to a distant city when Mary was huge with child. They were only engaged, and so the public would look at them with scorn. In fact, Joseph had considered breaking up with Mary, but stayed with her after an angel explained that the child Mary was carrying was a miracle baby and that Mary was still a virgin. They traveled all that way to Bethlehem from Nazareth, which was at least a three days journey. They went because of a tax that the government had imposed. Then when they arrived in Bethlehem, they came to the inn and there was no room. No one had room for a pregnant teenager and her boyfriend. At Christmas, we remember how much God has given to us. This great gift from God is summed up in John 3, 16 through 17, which reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. God gave us so much. Recently, I was reminded of how much God has given us. My youngest daughter, Rachel, is in a Christmas program. She has one simple line. We give gifts because God gave us the best gift, Jesus. So I have practiced this line with Rachel so she'll do well in her play. And then, while I was reading Rachel the book by Shel Silverstein, The Giving Tree, I was reminded again how much God has given us. The Giving Tree is a story of an apple tree and a little boy. The boy loved to play in the apple tree and swing from its branches. He loved running around the tree and eating the tree's apples. The boy and the tree played together and it was great fun. But as the boy grew older, he had more worldly and sophisticated tastes. So one day he came to the tree and demanded money. He had no time for play. The tree gave the boy all her apples so that the boy could sell them and have money. The boy thought that money would buy his happiness. The tree gave all its fruit. Then a long time passed. The boy returned to the tree. He was even busier in his life now, and he had no time for play. He thought that having a house would make him happy. The tree gave all her branches to the boy, and he used them to build a house. He thought having a fancy house would make him happy. The tree gave all its fruit and then gave all its branches. And now an even longer time passed. Then the boy returned to the tree. He was still searching for happiness and had no time for play. Now the boy wanted to go away. So the tree gave the boy her trunk, which he made into a boat. He sailed away and left the tree just an old stump. A very long time passed. Then the boy, now a rather old man, returned to the tree. He looked at the old stump. The tree had given all the apples, the tree had given all the branches, the tree had given the trunk, the tree had given all, and the boy had not found lasting happiness anywhere else. So now the boy sat his weary body down on the stump and rested. In a similar way, God has given us all that he had, his only son, Jesus Christ, who came into the world to save us, the word that became flesh and lived among us, the great miracle of the Incarnation. We can hear the Christmas story time and time again, but is it personal for you? For God is still coming to you, and we all, we all, each and every one of us, are faced with that lingering question. Is there room in your heart for Jesus? Christmas can seem like the busiest of times. What are you busy with? 
Are you busy preparing foods or cookies, cakes, goodies, or other low-fat stuff? Or are you chasing after the perfect present? Are you running after the best toy? And what is it this year? Is it a pet rock? Or is it a Cabbage Patch doll? Or is it a Tickle Me Elmo? Or is it a Turbo Man? Or is it a new Beanie Baby? Or is it a retired Beanie Baby? Or is it Furpy? Just how busy is your life? Christmas gifts sometimes leave me puzzled. Why is it that we celebrate the birth of our Savior, who would spend most of his earthly life as a homeless street preacher? Why do we celebrate by seeing how much stuff we can accumulate? Why is it that we celebrate the birth of the Prince of Peace by giving our children toy guns, warplane swords, and violent video games which teach them to kill? Yes, we have a very busy world. And being far too busy is not just a new problem. This problem was well known many years ago by Mary and Joseph having to travel to Bethlehem. And the writer of the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes knew about chasing after empty problems in a busy life. It was the great and wise King Solomon who under God's divine inspiration wrote Ecclesiastes. Solomon, that great man who was given the gift of vast wisdom, yet even with all that wisdom, King Solomon was way too busy. Solomon writes that he undertook great projects. It's no small thing. Solomon built houses for himself. He planted vineyards. He made gardens and parks and planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. Those are long-range plans. Those were not just short-lived, spur-of-the-moment compulsive acts. They were well-planned out endeavors. Solomon made reservoirs to water the groves of fruit trees. He built great public water systems. Solomon hired male and female servants, and he had so many servants that his servants were even having children together. Solomon had more herds and flocks than anyone else in Jerusalem. Solomon amassed a huge amount of gold and silver. Yet, in the end, Solomon says all his busy life was just empty. It was all a meaningless chasing after the wind. In all your busy life, is there room in your heart for Jesus? God tells us that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. Our bodies and our hearts are homes where Jesus can dwell and live if we love, follow, and trust in belief in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, our Master and Messiah. Jeannie was in a busy store shopping. She was thinking back to all the wonderful Christmas celebrations she had experienced as a child. But instead of bringing joy to her heart, this year they were bringing sorrow and regret. For Jeannie was sad because her parents were divorcing. While in the store, Jeannie was pushed and shoved and jostled from one aisle to another. The store was really busy. Then she heard a small voice cry out, Sarah, you get that thing out of your mouth right now. Jeannie looked over and saw a mom with a young daughter. The mom looked really worn out. The little girl, about five years old, was dressed rather shabbily. The weather was cold and the little girl did not have warm clothes. The little girl said to her mom, It was not in my mouth, mommy. I was just kissing it. See, mom, it's a baby Jesus. Jeannie looked on the shelf and saw that a nativity scene had fallen to the floor and spilled open. The mother was really stressed out. She snapped back, I do not care what it is. Just put it back right now. Little Sarah said, But mommy... It's broken off its set. It must be a manger set, and Jesus was broken off of it. Can we buy this little baby Jesus, Mommy? I told you to put that thing down, the stressed-out mom said. A few anxious moments passed in silence while Jeannie watched this drama unfold between a stressed-out mom and her little daughter. Then the mom kneeled down and hugged her daughter. Oh, I'm so sorry for snapping at you, said the mom. Please forgive me. Oh, Sarah, I love you so very much. Please forgive me. Oh, Mommy, of course I forgive you. I love you. I'm sorry that I asked to buy that baby Jesus. The love in little Sarah's voice was so thick and rich. After hugging each other for a long while, the mom said, Oh, Sarah, I just do not have the money to buy anything extra this year. Maybe next year if we save up we could get a tree. Then Sarah in her child's wisdom said, You know, Mommy, 
I really don't need that baby Jesus. Then little Sarah set the baby Jesus down on the floor and said to her mom, My Sunday school teacher said that Jesus is living in my heart when I love him. I'm so glad that Jesus is in my heart. Aren't you too, Mommy? The two of them left. Jeannie was touched as she saw the wonderful scene. She was also encouraged. So Jeannie took the broken off baby Jesus and the rest of the broken manger scene and hurried to the front counter. She spotted a clerk that she knew and told her that she was going to buy the manger scene. Then she gave the clerk the baby Jesus and pointed out little Sarah as Sarah and her mom were about to leave the store. The clerk ran over and gave Sarah the baby Jesus. Sarah's eyes lit up as she saw the baby Jesus and she gave him another kiss. Is there room in your heart for Jesus? Not all Christmas stories have such happy endings. Not everyone will find room in their heart for Jesus. For people will only find room in their heart for what they feel is important, and some people don't understand how vastly important Jesus really is. For without Jesus, a person is empty and alone. No matter what you fill your life with, if Jesus is not the center of your life, then it will all in the end be worthless. As I worked one long Christmas Eve shift many years ago at a hospital in a large city, I saw a Christmas story with a terrible ending. It was lived out in a way I can never forget. I've seen how holidays can bring out the extremes in people, both good and bad. Well, when I was a registered nurse, and at this time I was relatively inexperienced and I was new, it was my first year in intensive care. So when I was called to the charge nurse desk and asked if I'd take the new patient coming in from the emergency department, the ER, I agreed. I was already over swamped with more than enough work but I figured I would try. After all, back then I had a big, strong body that worked for hours on end without fatigue. I heard that the new patient coming in was a 45-year-old male with a severe head injury. So I thought to myself, oh wow, must be a car wreck. What a horrible thing to happen on Christmas Eve. I hope no one else got hurt. But I was wrong. It was not a car crash. Let's call the man Marvin. Marvin had been drinking and gotten into yet another quarrel with his grown daughter, Doreen. It was over that little something that always seems to come up at holidays. Do you know how that can be with family? But this time, Marvin decided he could not take it anymore. He ran up the stairs of his house and yelled to his daughter, Doreen, you don't love me. Nobody loves me. I can't stand it anymore. Then Marvin opened a drawer, took out his pistol and put it in his mouth and fired. It was a small caliber weapon, so it didn't remove the front half of his head, but instead bored a small path behind his eyes through his forehead, and it exited out the left side of his head. The exit wound looked to me kind of like a baseball was pushing its way out from inside Marvin's head. The brain matter just kept oozing out from that exit wound, from his nose, and from his one ear. No matter what I did to try to stem that seeping away of his brain, it just slowly seeped out. His life was ending drip by drip. Marvin had no room in his heart for Jesus. Marvin was way too busy to stop and forgive his daughter. Marvin was too mad to show love. And instead of finding room in his heart for Jesus at Christmas, Marvin found room in his brain for a bullet. Marvin shot himself on Christmas Eve at 6.34 a.m. Christmas morning, about seven hours after he pulled the trigger that one time in his act of futile rage. After seven hours, the brain tissue stopped oozing out of Marvin's head. Marvin was dead. Every Christmas, I think of Doreen and her family, and I wonder how she's doing. I know I should pray for her more, but I, I find I cry too much. I saw far too many suicides that ended up in death. Is there room in your heart for Jesus? Kathleen Weber has written a beautiful poem, and let's remember this at Christmas. As Mary rocks her baby boy, she's filled with sadness, filled with joy. She looks upon that tiny face and sees the hope of every race. Her heart is filled with a mother's glow and she never wants to let him go. 
She'll see him run and laugh and play. She longs to keep him safe each day. His life won't be an easy one. His destiny's hard as God's own son. Mary sees the miracles he'll perform, the lepers healed and free from scorn. The lame will walk, the blind will see. She sees his love will set us free. Then she sees him on the cross. She feels his pain and feels our loss. She knows his life must come to this. She sheds a tear and gives a kiss. His life won't be an easy one. His destiny's hard as God's own son. So as Christmas time draws near and we are all so busy here with shopping, baking trees or green, let's ask, what does this really mean? Let's take a moment from the fuss and think of all their gifts to us. A mother's love, a baby boy, peace and comfort, love and joy. For he was born for everyone, his destiny, God's only son. My friends, think and ponder, think and ponder. Is there room in your heart for Jesus? I'm John Thornton. Thanks very much for listening to Radio Good News, episode number 98. Our 100th episode is coming up just in two weeks. Some special things for that. I invite you to tune in for that, as I invite you to tune in every week. I encourage you to seek out a church family where you can worship, be encouraged, and celebrate the great miracle of Christmas. For this area offers many fine Bible-believing and teaching churches of various denominations. You can write to me at Radio Good News, P.O. Box 1722, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57101. And some of these messages are now being heard in Ghana, West Africa. Write to me and I'll let you know about that. May you richly know the blessings of the God who was, the God who is, and the God who is to come again. And always remember, the Bible says, love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or arrogant or boastful or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And God's love for us was manifest at the wonderful incarnation when Jesus was born. So love Jesus Christ our Lord with all your heart, strength, soul, and mind. And love your neighbors, your family, your friends, and even your enemies as yourselves. We'll finish today with Chris Rice. sky to close the day I weighed the surf where dolphins play the taste of salt the dance of waves and my soul wells up with hallelujahs a lightning flash my pounding heart a breaching wheel a shooting star Give testimony that you are And my soul wells up with hallelujahs Oh, praise Him all His mighty words There is no language where you can be heard Your song goes out to all the earth Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah Cratered moon and sparrow's wings Thunder's boom and Saturn's rings Unveil our Father as you sing And my soul wells up with hallelujah